And the Champion Series fields are set. I'm John Renton with my review of NWA Power Episode 35, and I gotta be perfectly honest, guys. I don't know how the fuck this thing's gonna work out. This reminds me of the Team Challenge series from the dying days of the AWA, and while the NWA has been swinging upwards as far as some things they've been trying and featuring some good talents and trying to bring some people in, they got M Power and the NWA 73rd anniversary show coming up in five weeks. I really don't think this is gonna work out all that well. I'm all for trying new things, but this seems like a dumpster fire just waiting to grow and grow and grow and seems really convoluted and i really don't fucking get it let me know your thoughts in the comments because the concept of doing like a points based system and having some different feuds possibly happen that's not the worst thing but the presentation here just did not fucking work for me so basically four champions team with four legends and boy they were really stretching the term legend with a couple of these and there's teams of four and basically, they have block A, block B, and then other teams have block A and block B, and then they select people, and they have this stuff, and basically, here are the rules. So, team selections, an open draft, uh, points-based, uh, team captain, keep, team captains, rather, pick the matchups one-on-one, -on -one, and each member of the winning team earns an open title shot. And then, the, <laughs> you know, and then, basically, like, they get a year's protection from all the, from all those who basically got, uh, basically, you know, were part of the winning team and everything, so it's like, almost like a giant group, like, where they're gonna just protect each other, and then they say they could get another title shot anywhere else or against any other champion if they so choose. Basically, I guess the winning team gets to call their goddamn shot. Okay, that's the best way I can explain it. I took screenshots of some of the rules, and I even rewatched a little bit of this, and I still don't understand what the fuck's going on. So, Aldous, Stevens, and Camille uh, say they would like to work with Austin Idol, while Pope uh, doesn't like Idol and says he'd be happy with anybody else. The legends are Austin Idol, Taryn Terrell, Melina, and Velvet. Okay, I'm sorry, but when Austin Idol is your best legend, you have a problem. Seriously, how are Taryn Terrell and Velvet Sky fucking legends? Melina, at least, has worked in multiple companies and everything and done pretty well and was a big star. But Velvet, seriously, Taryn Terrell, seriously, I know you have to go with what you're going with, but come on. So the participants, Sky Blue, Slice Boogie, Jordan Clearwater, Colby Carino, Crimson, JTG, Genocide, Lady Frost, Tom Latimer, Mystery Man, Mims, Murdoch, Kenzie Page, Jeremiah Plunkett, Sal Renaro, Marsha Rocket, uh, Fred Rosser, Tyrus... Joe Galley May, Valentine go over all this, and then basically we get just the people picking their goddamn teammates. So, uh, Aaron and Taryn, team of Aaron and Taryn, which Joe Galley loves saying, and it is kind of catchy, almost mean girls like. Too bad uh, Danny Jordan is not there, more in the pity, but she's doing great things elsewhere. Um, at, fir at first, Aaron's like, well, what the hell, you know, what's going on here? But eventually they had a little bit of attempts at comedy, which didn't really work all that well. Pope and Velvet, well, they're excited. Uh, Camille and Idol. Grandpa Idol just kept uh, admiring Camille's body. I don't blame him necessarily. She's in incredible shape. And boy, Nick Aldis and Melina. Nick ain't sold. Melina is like, why am I here? Why are you even, you know, pretending like you care about me? So, they're all eyeing gold, or in Aldis's case, win championships and make money. So basically what his mantra has been, I mean, pretty much what the mantra should be of any wrestler to, it, to especially make money, but leave your mark. So, Camille picks uh, Latimer, Idol wanted Tyrus, and they're already having arguments, and this is a mess. Aaron picks Tyrus, okay, bit weird. Aldous picks Crimson, I guess they're friends. Melina's like, we need Murdoch, but Aldous doesn't want Murdoch anywhere near his team to get a, a potential shot to build that more. Again, five weeks until their pay-per-view, and they're doing stuff like this. So, Pope and Velvet pick... Um, Murdoch, and he's coming for the championship, and then they end up picking Genocide, because we just go basically to the end, and then we go right back to the beginning, with the teams just switching places for who they pick. Genocide gets picked, Aldous and uh, Melina picks Sky Blue, Taryn picks Lady Frost, who looks less than thrilled, and Kenzie Page by default is on Camille, because they don't have that many women in the company. Camille ends up picking Kratos, Aaron and uh, Taryn pick JTG, Aldous picks... Uh, Fred, uh, picks uh, Fred Rosser, and then um, <coughs> Pope picks, uh, Pope and Velvet pick Jack Stane. And then uh, they, they pick, let's see, the Mystery Man gets picked for Pope and uh, Velvet's team. All this Melina picks Slice Boogie. Even Melina's like, does it really matter what I think? Aaron and Taryn do some comedy, Marsha Rocket gets picked. Camille and Idol pick Mims. Sal is on Team Camille, Jordan's on Team Aaron. 
Jeremiah picks, uh, Jeremiah is on all those. He was not a bullfrog. And Colby is on Team Pope. So Block A, Camille and Team Aaron are facing off against each other. Latimer versus Rocket. Mims versus JTG. Kenzie Page versus Frost. Kratos versus Tyrus. B Block and not Rocksteady. Aldous versus Team Pope. Sky Blue versus Genocide. Murdoch versus Rosser. Uh, Crimson versus Mystery Man. And then Jack Stane versus Slice Boogie. So, okay, look, I'm not against trying new things, but I gotta be honest, guys, if this doesn't work out, I may just review their pay-per-views, maybe the occasional power. But this really kind of broke me because my brain was just trying to process all this. It's just really, really bizarre. I mean, I, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments because this just seems like a mess to me. This seems like a desperate attempt to drum up interest and try and reinvent the wheel when you just need to build feuds and everything, and I don't really understand how they think they're going to draw a lot of buy rates for their pay-per-views with stuff like this. They're really going to need to put the pedal to the metal. They only have another month's worth of taping, you know, shows that they're going to do until their pay-per-views. So anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ritlin. I'll see you soon.